looks like my old high school ride. Ah, oh, jeez, those were the days. <laughs> Wonderful, it's you again. Yep, it's me, Dave. I've got a lot of emails about hauling flattened cars on flatbeds. Some of you mentioned getting slammed for not properly securing the load. Sucks, doesn't it? Let's fix this. There are specialized trailers designed to haul flattened cars and meet all the cargo securement requirements. But since most of us still use flatbeds, we can run into problems. DOT has been known to pull drivers and loads out of service because the flattened cars were not properly secured. So listen up while I tell you how to do it right. Back in 2004, the DOT changed the cargo securement requirements on a lot of commodities, including flattened cars. But some haulers haven't quite gotten the message yet. So let's break down these requirements. The basic cargo securement rules are all about containing, immobilizing, and securing the cargo to prevent movement during transport. Keep that in mind for all loads and you're off to a great start. The rules get a little more detailed when dealing with flattened or crushed cars, but there's really only two basic steps. First, make sure the cargo does not shift during transit. Second, make sure no loose parts from the flattened vehicles can dislodge and fall from the transport vehicle. Let's talk about securing the load. If you're lucky enough to have an honest to goodness crushed car hauler, the trailer is designed to contain just about everything. It has three solid walls and one open side with a big chain link fence that wraps the load up when loaded. Just don't stack the crushed vehicles higher than the walls of the trailer, but make sure the load can't move forward, backward, or sideways. Once you've done that, the stack needs to be secured with at least two tie downs. Chains and binders are the right way to do it. Synthetic webbing or nylon straps alone are not acceptable if there's direct contact with the crushed vehicles. Now, if you're in Canada, uh, pick me up a case of that Canadian whiskey, eh? <laughs> Just kidding. But in Canada, make sure synthetic webbing or nylon straps don't get anywhere near the load. Those Transport Canada guys hate synthetic webbing and nylon straps. If you're loading onto a flatbed that has only two side walls or no walls at all, then you have to use a minimum of three tie downs. Again, chains and binders work best. Here's another important step. Use a containment system that prevents liquids from leaking from the bottom of these crushed vehicles and prevents loose parts from falling off during transit. Those fancy new crushed car haulers have built-in liquid containment systems. But if you're like me and run flatbeds, use absorbents or trays to make sure the vehicles are free of liquids before they're loaded. Now, the containment system you use for preventing small parts from falling off can be as simple and easy to use as the cargo netting stuff that some vendors supply. This usually has no more than a one inch opening, so it's likely to contain at least anything that might come loose, like a mirror or a pair of fuzzy dice. I should point out the DOT requires us to consider the total working load limit of the securement chains and binders. Our chains and binders have to secure at least 50% of the total weight of the load we secure. Just keep in mind that you might need to add additional tie downs to meet this requirement. In Canada, the working load limit for these securement devices must be at least 5,000 pounds. Or the birth weight of my mother-in-law. Oh, take that, Ethel. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Don't forget to inspect these chains and binders before you use them. DOT can yank you off the road if your securement devices are not in good shape. This means no bent chain links, welded sections, or too much corrosion or similar damage. And now, you're good to go. Speaking of which, I gotta go. <laughs> Just remember these simple rules and you'll be all set. As long as Ethel keeps totaling her minivans, you'll have plenty of business. And remember that you need to operate safely or not at all.
Oh jeez, those were the days. <laughs> there goes Ethel's minivan. <laughs>